my sister. We're best friends, like we've been close forever. She wouldn't just pick up and leave. There's a big mess of stuff right there, and like you might have something right there. Right there's a car, I believe. I just want to know she's okay, that's all, and that I love her, that she is loved more than anything. Surely both people are you. We are back on day five searching for Savannah Hell. Now Savannah went missing May 4th of 2022. She's a 22 year old female who was driving a 2012 Kia Forte. But we have a lot that goes into this. The one is Savannah sent out three text messages to her sister, to a, buddy, a friend in California and one other person that said, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. She also sent her, her uh, boyfriend a text message and this video message was her scrolling through his phone of him chatting with another female. Now the thing is, is at 22, I mean, this can absolutely devastate you, especially when my understanding is additional mental health uh, with, uh, you know, drinking all night. Her boyfriend says that they used to do pop, but she wasn't doing it at the time. So I don't think that there's a combination of multiple substances going on, but you know, a, a broken heart, a broken heart can definitely, you know, cause you to do something for a, a long-term fix to a short-term problem. And we all know this, the older we get, you know, we have these hills and valleys in life and, and we just have to work our way through them. And so now we work with the clues that we have. You know, one is her sister Kirsten gave us the location that Savannah kept driving that morning. You know, she was seen on CCTV over at the parking garage. She was seen buying a vape over at the Chevron station. She sh turned her cell phone off, and this is a Tuesday morning, she turned her cell phone off over at the grocery store that is near her her house and that is the last time that the phone ever ended up pinging and so we have to take these boat ramps and you know how what where, where can you hide a car after all this time well you know our thing is we're always looking in water everything we've been doing has basically been a search on the west side of the red river and so now searching all those boat ramps and here's our big star topo map of all these dots that we've searched what have we been missing and so now you know now we bring bill into it this last uh, yesterday and today on this search and He's looking at it with fresh eyes and catching things that we're not. And he's saying, you know, today is, Jared, get off from that side of the river. We still have a straight line that brings you to this side of the river. Straight down the river, right here to Veterans Park, right next to the uh, Bossier Sheriff's Office, there are two, the largest boat ramps and a dog park right here on this side. So if she, not Google, but if she actually put the directions in her phone into, in, into Google Maps, yeah. This is the closest boat ramp to the parking garage. And, and five miles from where she used to work as well. Exactly. And one of the reasons that we were uh, hesitant to this side of the river is because if you look up here, there's a sheriff's uh, substation that's just right up here that's a part of this parking lot. If you come down here on this boat ramp and you look up, you can't see anything in the parking lot and nobody's going to see you. Even though there's, there's a sheriff's substation right there, you could absolutely end up in the water right here. So there's two boat ramps here. Fingers crossed, let today day six be the day that we bring Savannah home. For families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. So I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview as we're doing this uh, sonar right now. We're going to start with this one. It's the hummingbird. Right now I'm shooting side imaging on it. 75 feet to the left, 75 feet to the right. Now you can see this uh, dock right here. That's what we're looking at right here is this line right here. Now anything that's black is my actual uh, water column. So you see the boat icon at the top of the screen. That is the direction of travel. And then the black is 18 feet. Uh, you see it's 18 feet left and right, which matches with the depth over on the bottom left. You'll see where it says 19 feet right there. So really close, 18, 19 feet. Now this other one is my live scope. This is, this is my Garmin. 
uh, with that one, anything that's happening is happening in real time. So if a fish swims by, you can see it in real time. And so with that one, with the river, depending on how it's running, we're gonna head down about 300 yards to uh, scan the shoreline here. See a shadow pop up like this and we get really excited about it. That's, I believe it's just a tree, but we'll circle over it. You can see it's just a few feet off to the left there. Yeah, that's just a tree right there. This is what we were seeing. There's a big mess of stuff right there, and like you might have something right there. Right there's a car, I believe. So it was 36 feet over from the line that we were on. And then what we'll do is we'll identify in line with the shoreline here, which, like which tree we want to line up with to really pinpoint where we're at. And that's really helps me triangulate everything here. And then we'll see it on live scope as well. And we'll get some height and some shape to it. So that's a tree there. That angle is nothing. So now we'll move over a little bit. And then something else right there. Looks like a boat. All right, so let's go over about 12 feet. So there's that. That's actually a tree, not a boat, just the way it's laid in there. There's no back eddy here, so there's no coming up here, especially this far. All right, I'm gonna pull up. Let's pull out the uh, computer, do a little uh, look at the star topo, and figure out our next move. All right, Bill, will you grab my computer off the bed under my pillow? Okay, so what we have is this is everything in red is everything that we have already searched. Before we leave town, if we don't find her down south today for what we're planning, this is the very last stop that I want to make on the north as we're heading up towards Missouri, that I want to double check this area. This is where we found a car that was 40 to 50 years old or so, heavy fish cover, so I could have some addition, an additional vehicle in here. Right now, what we were talking about this morning is we want to now focus on the highway one and the route that she would normally take down to her house down here one of the things that we were talking about with allison yesterday is that she's really interested in and kirsten is as well we went to go stop by this lake last time caspiano um, the issue is we came down like this road we tried to get around here but we couldn't get onto the boat ramp over here so i think what we need to do is we need to come cut back head past some of these houses and see if we can cut back to this boat ramp here in the process of doing so, we can identify if there's any other boat ramps of potential coming down this highway one right here. The one that I see, Jared, is I see Bickham Dixon Park right next to the college that she went to. Can you send me a pin drop on that? I can. So we know of the car off, off of 84, and then the detective wants us to check this one. Head southeast. All right, 20 minutes. Shallow. Yep, we're good to go. All right, it is 194 feet. You must have broken your ball. All right, it says three feet. Oh, there's a fence up there. I can't get to it. See, the boat ramp is right over here is where the boat ramp is at for it. All right, well, let's head down to 84 then and go hit that boat ramp. And speaking to one of the fire department guys, 
they said that they did a search here for an individual that fell off of a boat. Now he was deceased, but they ended up finding him on sonar. When they located him on sonar, they also identified that a car was down here, but because they were not searching for a car, nobody dove on the car, nobody knows what this car is, and so that's why we're here today is just one, see if we'd find the car and to, to dive on it and see if it's Savannah's. I texted her sister Kirsten yesterday also and asked her if this would be a logical location that Savannah would have known about and Kirsten confirmed that this is. We're uh, smart enough to find this car, huh? Seven feet of water already. Eight feet right there off the ramp. That's 30 feet already. So we have to also look at uh, if they would have come off of here. Cause we've seen them come off of the grass areas before. So we're gonna get lined up, do 35 feet up from shore, and run the shoreline down 35 feet off. There's something out there, but I think it's just a rock. All right, right there, is that a car? Is that a rock? Those are rocks there. An old uh, ramp or something. So that's not a car. If we don't find a car, I'm gonna say one of two things. They either misidentified this as a car, or a year ago, they already pulled the car out for the local jurisdiction. And you can see that's not tall enough. That's only 18 inches tall for that. So we zoom in on all that. It's not a car. It almost looks like a boat. And this looks like an old dock. Yeah, it's only two feet in height. And you can see at that angle also that it's not a car. All right. So we'll keep scanning. We'll check this right here. See what that is. Hang on, we're turning in the wave. So right there. Hang on. Woo! 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 Wee! So right there. What is that? Looks fairly shallow. Oh, yeah, that is a car, isn't it? I think, well, that looks skinny that way. It only looks two feet wide right there. Doesn't it? Yeah, that's only two feet wide. Let me get some uh, down imaging of it. See if we can pick it up better. Yeah, not a car, I got it. Too skinny, too long. Oh, it's a boat. All right, well, that identifies that. Go hit Cross Lake and start working away back up towards the house. Go hit that one north tonight too. How, how deep are we right now? Should I drop it? Three foot, two foot. Three feet. Yeah. Four feet. Two feet, 1.5 feet. Yeah. Half a foot. Yeah. Yeah, she's not in here. She'd still be stuck at the boat ramp. So we're going to say no go to this. What I want to do is just north of her home, there is this body of water that I've always been suspicious of, but I don't think so because of you have the apartments around it. So let's go check this one though, just in case she comes in like over here. But again, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning 
so I don't think so. And then after that, then I want to head back up here and double check this location up here. Yeah, but I think you have, a, you have a fence around all of it. See, there's a fence on this side of it. Oh, that looks shallow too. Continue on Louisiana. So our last location is the sun is setting and we're heading back to the north of her house where the historic bridge is at and the railroad bridge is at. Last time we were here, we had heavy fish cover, probably 15 feet of fish cover. We were able to identify a older vehicle. It was about 40 to 45 years old is my guess. But the question that has remained in our minds is by chance did we miss Savannah at this location because of all the fish cover. So fingers crossed there's not going to be any fish cover this time. We'll be able to identify and scan this area properly and be able to mark it off 100%. That's good. All right. All right, now no fish cover, so that's good news. And here's the hole, it should drop down. That's what I want. There's a big log sticking out. Big tree, there's still fish cover down there. Not as bad as it was before. And I can see a lot better on side scan now too. Far out. So let's go double check this real quick. See this? Right down the left. I don't think it's a car. There's the old car. No new car. So this turns into another day of frustration. We come into every single one of these cases so hopeful on day one, on day two, even on day three. We get to day four, day five like we're on now today, and we just sit here and we question what is it we're missing? We have all these clues. We have the tracks. We have her searches that she was doing. We have the, you know, the text messages that she sent, you know, and, and how do we piece all this together so that we can find Savannah? And at this point, we have not. But we do thank you for being a part of this with us because now we can put this story out there so that way you can watch it. You can spread awareness, put the word out to bass fishermen and other fishermen that are in the area that have sonar. Let them know that Savannah is still missing and see if they can find a car underwater. Report it to your local sheriff's department or fire department. Let them know because the ones here in this area, incredible to work with and they are going to take it seriously if you tell them that you found a car and you think it's Savannah Hill. We appreciate you being here with us. Fingers crossed, Savannah's gonna be brought home soon.